Thank you, Akush. Thank you, Akush. Thank you, Akush. I'm on. So, welcome, everyone. And as I Akush mentioned, we renewed the Beam and Column tools in ARCAD 23. And in the next few minutes, I would like to show you these enhancements through three different uh, structural types. Precast concrete, uh, steel, and glued laminated timber. And we're going to have an, one extra there. So uh, let's see the first example. Let's say you have to design an industrial building where the structure is proposed to be precast concrete by the structural engineer. And previously, uh, how you could do that? Let's take a look at a column and beam joint of such a precast system. So this is what I would like to model in ARICAD, right? Previously, how, how, how you could do that? By using Morse, using custom GDL solutions, which was possible, but it was quite cumbersome and, uh, and time consuming. And at the same time, getting out documentation, scheduling of such elements was, uh, was quite difficult. But in ARICAD 23, uh, with a dedicated solution, uh, we can do it much easier. So let's uh, try and uh, recreate the previous uh, connection that I just showed you. And one of the biggest enhancements that we introduced to beams and columns is that now we can uh, use multiple segments within one element, which will make, uh, make you uh, possible to create more detailed geometries. So if we take a look at this, I don't have a proper support for my beams. So by adding a couple of uh, simple segments, I can edit uh, it on a segment level and uh, give it a proper support. Right, so right now I have a simple cantilevered support, but uh, based on the input from the structural engineer, I would like to create a corbel type support. And doing that, uh, it's possible to, we introduce a new functionality to make it possible. And these are the, ta these are the tapered segments, which meaning that the dimensions of the cross sections can alter throughout the axis length of the, of the column or the beam. So right now, we can very quickly create such corbel type supports for the beams. Now, so far this is all, all right, but let's take a look at the beam and make it a, a proper ending as well. Similar to the columns, I can add segments to it by, adding, uh, by clicking on the reference line. And right now, as you can see, it looks correct, but this is only a result of the priority-based connections at the support. So since we are using parametric complex profiles, I can get rid of the girder depth or just reduce it. And since I do not need a, a stronger support throughout the beam, I can make it a little bit thinner on the top. But right now, I have two different versions of the same parametric complex profile on these two uh, parts. Now, how could I bridge the gap? By combining the tapered segment uh, capability with parametric complex profiles, I can get a, a real smooth transition between these, these two segments, allowing me to to create such uh, connections. Now using, <laughs> now using these multi-segmented multi beams and columns, we can very quickly in about 30, uh, 20, 30 minutes, we can model such a huge industrial building, which is structurally correct, so, uh, such as the roofs, uh, roof supporting structure beams, with tapered segments and custom endings. Or for example, we can take a look at the precast uh, pocket footing of the columns, which is just a simple two-segmented column, basically. All right, but besides the proper structurally correct 3D representation and modeling of such elements, we also have to take a look at the 2D documentation in all projected views. So let's take a look at the floor plan representation and the founding, uh, foundation drawings of this, uh, of this uh, building. And now in ARCAD 23, we introduced the cover fill functionality for both beams and columns. So now you can have a proper floor plan representation in all projected views. But we want, went one step further as well. And now we can display uh, hidden elements underneath slabs. Completely correct. So let's just cut a hole into my slabs here. And as you can see, we have within one element, wherever the element is hidden, we can display it with dashed lines. Wherever it is visible, it is uh, displayed with solid lines. Now, what do you think will happen if I adjust only this one edge of the slab? Can the representation follow? Well, sure it can. And I believe this is a, 
I believe this is a very nice uh, example on how much emphasis we put on making ARCAD right to the finest detail. All right. In the, ne in the next example, in the second example, uh, let's say you have to design a sports hole, a handball court to be specific, where uh, the, the functional requirements are quite simple. You have to put a roof and some walls uh, above the court. And uh, previously, you could do this, but let's also add a little bit of twist to this uh, building. And instead of an orthogonal uh, grid, let's make it a skewed and uh, distorted grid. Now, uh, in this case, as you can see, all, each and every frame is slightly bit different than the other. Uh, previously, it was quite difficult to model this, but in ARCAD 23, we introduced a new two-point placement method for both the beams and columns. So now you can connect any two-point in space in 3D very easily and very quickly. So in, a, in just a couple of seconds, I can model uh, one of my frames. And the same goes for, for uh, beams as well. And in this case, I'm using multi-segmented beams as well with uh, tapered segments uh, giving me a correct structural representation of, of such frames. And there's one more thing that we introduced uh, custom end cut angles for, uh, for these columns and beams, so you can have nice and clean connections uh, uh, for, your, for your beam column connections, such as this one. Now let's take a look at uh, on the inside uh, when, the, when the building is done. And similarly to the, uh, to the frames, you can very quickly and very easily uh, model the cross bracing or the purlins of the roof structure uh, allowing you to work uh, correctly and accurately and still focus on the design. All right, so far we've been dealing with uh, orthogonal or, or linear structures, so let's take a look at uh, something uh, different. Uh, I have a water sports arena here and I would like to create the roof structure of this, uh, of this building using uh, long span glued laminated timber. Now previously we could create curved beams uh, in ARCAD, but only in a horizontal plane. Now it is possible to curve beams in a vertical plane, allowing you to model such uh, buildings. So I just simply grab the reference line of this beam and I can create these vertically curved structures. <laughs> Again, let's take a look at how it looks from the inside. I believe it's, it's quite impressive, isn't it? But where else would we use uh, vertically curved beams? For example, in case of uh, historical projects and renovations. So we've, we've t took the, the tool for a ride and we tried to, uh, to see how it performs with, uh, by creating this church building. And as you can see, we've modeled the columns with multi-segmented uh, columns using parametric complex profiles. The vertical arches are modeled with beams, and even the, the ribs of the vaults are, are created with the brand new uh, and renewed ARCAD 23 uh, beams and columns. So I hope uh, in the past few minutes I could show you how powerful the new tools will be, and with that you will be able to create such projects and much more, I believe. Thank you, and back to Akos.